Scorpio, this is your tarot reading for July. Most signs have been very interesting and I can see yours is as well. I really hope you get something useful from this. I, I sincerely do. Whoa, Scorpio. Let's see, one, two, three, four out of seven guards are the same as Sagittarius. Now you're probably saying, well, you've not, you've not shuffled the cards properly. But I have. I have. Let me explain to you, these are energies. So the fact that different signs should have the same energies within their reading shouldn't actually come as that great a surprise. Now, yours are in different positions, so what I mustn't do is be overly emphasised by what I read for Sagittarius. Uh, the middle card, the chariot, you've got balance, you know where you're going, you're going there quickly, you're in control. Normally I'd say it's a wonderful card and it runs throughout the entire reading. But things are so uncertain in the world at the moment. I'm not certain that you've got the right direction. Bottom right, recent past, Queen of Pentacles. I always call her the single mother card. And then I always say you don't have to be a parent and you don't have to be female. But that's the sort of energy. We now have the Deception card. This is in an identical place to the deception card we had for um, we had for, for Sagittarius. Now I thought his was about or theirs was about financial deception. I thought it was to do with global issues. I'm not certain yours is. We'll have to wait. And we now have the Eight of Pentacles. Learning a new skill. Maybe a bit laborious. In fact, I'm certain it is. Because the next card, which leads to the outcome, is the... Um, is that a nine or a ten? It's a ten, yeah. Ten of wands. Feel like you're carrying the burden of the world on your shoulders. Feels like a bit of a struggle. You're thinking of giving up. But you know that you're nearly there. What would change the outcome is you planning. You're planning something very different. And the outcome is the Page of Swords. You going out and seeking new information. I have no idea if this is entirely personal about world events or the interplay of them both. I hope you're going to stick around with me while I find out. Now the central card is the chariot. Normally I'd say it's a wonderful card and particularly a wonderful card to have here because it dominates the entire reading. It's a card of great balance. You see one white horse, one black horse behind him at one Hindu, one Buddhist temple. He's got hold of the reins, he's in control, he knows where he's going and he's going at a pace. So normally I'd say it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to be, to have this card, particularly in this position, because that energy runs throughout the entire reading. But I have been getting messages lately that the world is in such turmoil that maybe it's wrong to have too much direction and we need to be more flexible. I'm not saying that that's how we should interpret this card. I'm just sounding a warning at this stage. In your past we have the Queen of Pentacles and as I say I, I always call it the single mother card and then I say that you don't have to be female and you don't have to be a parent. So you're probably saying what the hell's he on about? Well the cards are about energies so it's the sort of energy and it's energies that are going to affect you during July. So the energy feels like the energy of a single mother. Uh, but I mean, it could be about anything. It's just that sort of a general feeling. 
it's a feeling like there aren't enough hours in the day to do all that you, you would like to do. It's a feeling like you're not doing a good job when probably you are. It's a feeling of struggle that things could be easier for you. It's a feeling that you must carry on for others. It's a feeling of being tired, maybe a little bit fed up. So those are the energies that are impacting on you. Now, it's not about fate either. These are energies impacting on you. You have free will. You can listen to this reading and say, ah, I'd like to change that in this direction. And you can. Now, <clears throat> we have this Seven of Swords, a card of deception, in exactly the same placement for you, Scorpio, as it was for Sagittarius. For Sagittarius, I'm pretty certain it was about some sort of financial investment deception. Is yours the same? Well, I can, I can see some reasons why it would be. Uh, but I can also see some reasons why maybe it isn't. So this is, this is a deception that's going on. It's not necessary that they will get away with it and not be found out. It's not necessary that um, they will actually make off with whatever it is they're trying to take from you. Uh, but it is definitely a card of deception. If this is the similar sort of deception to that that's been cropping up recently, then I can tell you I've had very, very strong indications from the universe, or God if you like, uh, that the perpetrators will be found out and will be brought to justice. And that you needn't worry about it. You focus on yourself. You focus on raising your vibration. Leave this to the universe. And now in the future, you appear to be learning a new skill. And given the way the world is changing, I think learning a new skill is a, a very sensible thing to be doing. Um, <clears throat> What skills are going to be useful in the future? Well, I certainly think practical skills, you know, growing things, repairing things. Skills to do with nature. Skills to do with emotions and the subconscious, not only yours, but other people's. Skills to do with community and working with others. Now, I don't know if that's what you're learning, but those strike me as important. It could be a bit, well, it will be a bit laborious, and I'm sure you'll be thinking of throwing the towel in because you can't really see the way the world is changing, and you're doing this as a sort of a matter of blind faith without really thinking, is it going to work out? Uh, but there's every suggestion that it is if you're following the sort of thing I've talked about. Do you know, I think you are finding it a little bit tiresome, a little bit laborious. You perhaps feel like you're carrying the world on your shoulders, that you're carrying an incredible burden. But you also know that <coughs> things are about to change. Things are going to get better. And I promise you things are going to get better. Now, <coughs> the last two cards were in the same placement for cancer and I interpreted this card as being you wanting to throw the towel in and I was saying don't and well I'm still saying the same thing but I don't know as I should be interpreting this as you wanting to throw the towel in because normally this means yes there is a burden but you know an end is in sight and you've got the motivation to continue so let, let's keep with that one for now <laughs> Now that energy of extra burden leads to the outcome. I don't think the outcome's a bad outcome. 
Uh, but what would change the outcome is is the two of wands, which is a card of planning. Now, I, I think maybe this relates to the overall energy, which is the chariot. And if you remember, I said, normally I'd say the chariot is a good card. Normally I'd say this planning is a good thing. But I also said, do we really know what's going on in the world? Are we really able to have a sense of direction? Are we really able to plan? And there have been indications from the universe that most signs don't. And I've got to say, I have the distinct feeling that you, Capricorn, are, are just that little bit behind some signs. Aries was the sign that strikes me as really got to grips with what's going on in the world. I, I feel this is less so for you. And if you don't really understand what's going on, should you be planning? Should you have this sense of direction? These are just thoughts I'm having at this moment in time. Because I haven't got to grips with your reading just yet. And do you know, I, I think I might have got this right that you haven't quite got to grips with what's going on. I don't think any of us have, including Aries, I might add. Uh, but, you know, you, you, you perhaps are behind some other signs. And that is because the outcome is the Page of Swords. And this is a thirst for knowledge, you looking for information. So there's information you don't have. So I can understand you wanting to plan. I can understand you wanting a sense of direction. We all do. We all want to do something in these troubled times. But we don't quite know what to do. So you end up trying to explore, trying to understand what is going on in the world. Um, and, you know, that is a great thing to be doing. But I want some clarification because there's some parts of this that... I wouldn't say they don't make sense, but it could be there are competing narratives, you know. All these, I've got to say, you know, when you look at these cards, they're only about energies that impact on you. So you have free will, you know, you can you can use these energies for your benefit. But there seem to be a, maybe a counter narrative within this that I want to try and tease out. <laughs> And maybe fundamental to our understanding of what's going on is this deception card. And I'm pretty certain I was right to pick it. Because the first card is the lover's card. Which suggests to me that the deception is either about love or that somebody you love is involved in the deception. The next card is the world card, which... Yeah, the world is changing. A cycle is coming to an end and a new one is beginning. And the third card is the High Priestess card. A card of intuition. A card of being at home with nature. A card of understanding the subconscious. Wow. Wow. Now, do you remember, in the past, we had that single mother card? And now we've got this lover's card about this deception. I mean, what it's suggesting to me is that, I mean, it might be a deception about love, but I think it's even bigger than that. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I think you've been taken in by a love rat. But I think they're, they're a bit more than simply a love rat. I think there's more to it than that. I think they're quite a powerful person. Uh, they are somehow bound up in some of the things that are going on in the world. Um, now, I mean, if, if we think of all the villains that have been put before us, you know, there's the Bond villain and there's the guy who owns large software company I mean they're all so ugly aren't they so I do hope you've not fallen for one of those 
suppose some people fall for, fall, fall for power, don't they? Yeah, it does feel like you, you know you're intimately involved with somebody that's that knows more about what's going on in the world than most of us. And I think that's why you're behind, because you sort of don't want to believe it. Hey, you look now, we've got the world card. That's the end of a cycle, a new cycle beginning. I mean, it doesn't have to be global events. It could be cycles within your life. Let me just have a look at... at Cycles within your life. Deception. Realising you've been with a love rat. Lear uh, learning something for the future. Seeking out information. It may not be global. It may be entirely personal to you, this reading, mightn't it? But a cycle coming to an end and you learning from that cycle. Yeah. Maybe I, sh maybe I should back off on this global stuff. Even though I think they're all inextricably linked. Uh, yeah. You being reborn, having learnt the lessons. But it took this deception to do it. Yes, indeed. Now, let's bring the global back into it. Because to my mind, what's going on in the world is that those people who've deceived us, those people who've lied, those people who've made money while the rest of us suffered have pushed it too far and there's a good many of us have realized and I think it's a similar thing with you even though this may be an entirely personal reading and now just humor me for the time being let's keep talking in terms of global events even though I think that this is much more personal to you and that is that those people who've deceived us have overstretched. They've, they've gone too far. And many, many of us now have realised what's gone on. But you see, what we've done is we've just not, we've not realised it's about this recent incidents. We've realised that it's been going on forever. And we're now beginning to question everything. And so are you. You're beginning to see through the psychology of all of this. And you're beginning to say, well, you know, yeah. They took me for a ride. I've not come out of it so well. But what have I learned from it? I've learned an awful lot. I've probably learned about forgiveness. But I've also learned not to be so stupid again. Yeah, you've learned not we don't get fooled again. So I can't tell you whether this reading is entirely personal or about global events. But you can see how the two could well be interlinked. And it may well be that what has prevented you from seeing the truth is your personal involvement with things but suddenly suddenly you're going to get the information you need and it's going to cause a wildfire in your thoughts because you're going to extrapolate it onto so many other things we can summarize for you <laughs> Scorpio, when we read tarot, all we're reading is energies. These are energies that are going to impact upon you. You have free will. You can choose to go with some energies and not with others. So we're not talking about fate. We're talking about energies. And I've got a dilemma in this reading. Is, is your reading about the global or is it about the personal? And I think it's about both and their interplay. Because you see, the energies, the same energies would apply to both global events and to your personal life. So you can see how the global 
and the personal are inextricably linked. And certainly in terms of where you end up, I think you begin to extrapolate that your life is a microcosm of broader things in the world. The fact that some of it is personal, I think, means that you've not sort of spotted things as quickly as others. Uh, but I think you're going to really get up to speed by the end of July. And what's happened is, in the past, you were somewhat cheated in love. You might have had children with somebody that dumped you, and you were left with the children. But certainly you were, you were dumped by somebody, leaving yourself in a precarious situation. I think that person was a powerful person, but they were a love rat. They deceived you. And a part of this reading is about you coming to terms with the fact that you've been deceived. You're putting your life back together, which is a great thing. You're, in, you're learning new skills for the future. You've, you've got yourself a sense of direction. You've got a balance back in your life. And you're also going to engage in planning, saying, what what should I do? Um, this learning that you're engaging in, it might be laborious, and you might at times think of giving it up, but you sort of know that there's light at the end of the tunnel, and that's where you're moving towards. And what you're actually moving towards is an understanding of what has happened to you, an understanding of this deception, an understanding that you need to create, a, you need to change, you need to move on, you need to learn the lessons. An understanding that, I don't want to use the word human nature, but some humans behave in these ways. And what you'd started to do is extrapolate that, yeah, I met a love rat, they deceived me. But there's quite a few people who are like that in the world, often in powerful positions. So what can I begin to do to make my own life, and maybe the lives of others, better? 